What's going on, Infinity TV? You are tuned in to a brand new episode of the LA Sparks Weekly Show. Of course, I'm here, DJ Treacy Treats. It's Father's Day, so we gave the fellas the day off. I have a special guest inside of the studio. The Sparks couldn't get the job done against the Atlanta Dream today. 87-74 loss, but stay tuned. Stay right there. We got a lot to talk about. Infinity TV, you already know me. It's DJ Treacy Treese, and I am here with a brand new episode of the LA Sparks Weekly Show. Welcome in my homegirl to the show, Jackie Ray from Jackie Ray TV. Welcome to the studio, girl. Thanks for having me, girl. This is nice. Yes. We have to get the fellas the day off. Father's yes, Day, should. I'm sure they out barbecuing and doing whatever, you know, they're going to do they on Father's Day. Plate, That's least. right. At Bring least. us a plate to the studio. <laughs> so happy Father's Day to all the fellas who are watching. Let's talk about today's game. The Atlanta Dream won 87-74. Mm -hmm. The Sparks were keeping up for a while there, but it looks like it slid a little bit at the halftime, that third and that fourth quarter. Just what are your overall thoughts of the game today so far? You know, there's some things I know Coach always says, and all the players say there's no such thing as a moral victory, but there's some things that I'm seeing that I'm like, okay, I like this. I like that the mindset seems to have kind of shifted. We're not – constantly playing from behind. We're being aggressive right off the top. Obviously, there's some respect that De'Erica Hamby is getting. And so now when she's getting double and triple teamed, I don't know if we've quite figured out how to capitalize other players in those moments. Yeah. But as a whole, I feel like the foundational year is really coming together. There's some building blocks that we can build on, and it's going to be great. There's a lot of basketball left to play. Mm -hmm. And what I think is really good, too, is you're seeing these teams that are giving them all the business physically. Right. So this learning curve is going to go a little bit faster. So there's a little bit of, of things that I've seen that went well. There's some things that I'm like, okay, we probably should have fixed we, that we a little bit earlier. Yeah. But I'm excited about what I'm seeing. Loss and all, I'm excited about what I'm seeing. I, I got to agree with you. De'Ara hamby has been playing some good ball. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's drawing a lot of attention. She's putting up all-star numbers. Mm -hmm. Tonight it was a little bit harder for her to get going because there were always three red jerseys around her. So right. that's, that's just tough. Um, what did you see? One thing that I saw today was the rookies really stepped up. Yes. Rakia Jackson and um, Cameron Brink came through. They had a, both had a lot of fouls. Right. But <laughs> we got to fix that part. It, well, we do got to <laughs> fix that. But in their defense, everybody who plays Atlanta has a lot of fouls yes. because of Tina Charles and Cheyenne Parker. So what are your thoughts tonight on the rookies' performance? I've, I've constantly been impressed about Rakia, especially Rakia going from coming off the bench until now she's in a starting role. As a rookie, her name being called all the time, people are like, she got to get more minutes, she got to get more minutes. And sometimes they're just not ready for those minutes. But to see her go in there and she's not only ready, Cameron has always impressed me on her ability to play both sides of the ball. That right. does get her into some foul trouble sometimes. But her most aggressive, of the time. <laughs> right, most of the time. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but her aggressive nature and her inability to just take anything personally, and that's you're never going to scare her away. She's right. never going to back down from you. But to see those two together, and something that I think a lot of people miss and they don't really understand is – Number one, rookie burnout is real, and so we've not really seen that yet. But on top of rookie burnout, the things that they are required to do off the court just yeah. to try to make the Sparks relevant, it takes a lot of time mentally, emotionally, physically, and then you got to go play, and then you got to learn on the court. I think the way that I see them adapting, kudos to them. Kudos to them. Mm -hmm. And you talked about Rakia being in that starting lineup, which yep. we've debated here on the show, but for the sake of the argument of the starting lineup yes. is what it is, today – I wasn't too happy with the production of the starting lineup. You know, you got Kia Nurse, you got Lasia Clarity, who mm -hmm. are finding a hard time in finding that groove. And if you are having two members of your starting lineup that aren't giving you double digits, we get into some trouble, especially right. if we're coming out early. Right. So what do you think about C Coach Miller bringing in that second unit and people like Aerie and, and other people coming off the bench like Lee who are adding some offensive push? For the game. I've struggled with the with Aerie. Not not the way you think, but like mm -hmm. I love Lasia. They just are an amazing player. 
I love the way they see the floor, but I kind of just feel like Aries should be that starting point. Okay, you just said something controversial, but <laughs> I kind of agree with you okay. here. I think that, what do you, do you think something happened? Because for me, after the concussion, mm-hmm. nothing really was the same. Right, and that happens sometimes. Sometimes when you're coming back from an injury, you need a little bit of time. So, But at the same time, I'm not taking anything away from Lasia at all. But what I'm saying is, is now we have young core talent. Yeah. I think if we really want this to be a foundational year, let's give this young core that foundation to build for the future. So, but I would never, I would, I would never say this to her. Like, yeah, no, like, yeah sure. you starting lazy. What you mean? Like yeah. I would never, you know, and I think coach probably sees something different, obviously. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's just like, there's such, she, the energy shifts when she's on the floor. Agreed. And I, and I, it's special. It is very special. Mm-hmm. So we're going to take a quick break, y'all. We're going to go to coach. We're going to ask him some of these questions that we're talking about. So you stay tuned right here to the L.A. Sparks Weekly Show. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. Recording in progress. We'll start off with opening statements from Kurt. Um, Again, another game, you know, that uh, I think there was some positive things um, flanked by two rookies that that had really good stretches on the road tonight in in Atlanta against a talented team. Um, just a disappointing fourth quarter. Um, just could not find any rhythm offensively. Felt like uh, their physicality bothered us. We were struggling around the rim um, to get any kind of rhythm going, and uh, it got away from us in the fourth quarter. But proud of these two. Cam stepped back up after a, a tough offensive night in Minnesota and, and really, uh, you know, helped spark us. Rekia, really, a really good offensive night and, uh, you know, great days ahead for these two next to me. We'll start with player questions for players first. Infinity, we'll start with you. Hey, Rekia and Cam, it's DJ from Infinity TV. 
Coming off of two games where each of you were player of the game, can you talk about this new renewed energy that you're seeing and how you're implementing the changes that coach is asking for in game? Um, I think we're just trying our best to to bring energy and, and light into every space. And you know, for me, I I had a really tough game against Minnesota, and it you know it really showed to me. But uh, my teammates just just picked me up, and, and Kurt picked me up, and you know I just felt like I could contribute tonight. So you know we still fell short, but we just we still learned a lot. Yeah, I agree. Hey, Jackie Ray from Jackie Ray TV, um, Cam and Rakia again for both of you. Talk about the fourth quarter. Was there any fatigue that you were feeling in the fourth quarter, and have you thought about how you can make a stronger push later in the game? Um, I just feel like we just need to execute um, in the fourth quarter. When games get tight, we tend to not do the little things that kind of got us the lead. So I feel like we just need to continue to stay together, stay connected on both ends of the floor. Yeah, my first question is for so, Coach, I know you talked about this earlier before the game, just the road to win. You all still have a few more coming up. How do you feel like it's impacting you all? Because it's a long stretch. Um, I feel like, you know, it's just something that you got to do. Um, coming to the league, we know this is, you know, a tough league and a lot of traveling, but we just got to show up to work every day. So I don't feel like we could just use that as an excuse. I mean, it is tough going from a game and then traveling on the plane and, you know, trying to get yoga in to stretch our bodies out, make sure we're okay mentally and physically. But it is tough. But at the same time, we signed up for this. So we just need to be prepared. And then on the mental side, um, being a rookie, have you been able to just kind of like maintain and balance everything? Because I know it's a lot. You all season, it kind of gets started like right after college. So how's that been for you? Yeah, um, I feel like it's definitely been up and down. But my coaches and my teammates have been there for me. I'm so blessed that I came to L.A. because I got the utmost respect for each and every person here. They're truly there for us. Um, me, Percy, like everyone checks in, you know, everyone's there. The vets are always there to, for me if I need them. The coaches, you know, just one text away. So just having that in my reach just means a lot because I feel like everyone probably don't get that. And I feel like here in L.A., like we truly got that love and that family atmosphere. So um, I'm very grateful for that. But it's, it's definitely been up and down. Ricky year is going to be that. But we're, we're just going to continue to strive and get better. And to, uh, so I know you mentioned like the best being there. So my next question is for you, Cam. I just spoke to Kima. I've seen your clip when you were on the podcast. It's all good. You said something similar to Uzi when you said, like, we know the team is very competitive, but in the games, we still find in these moments to kind of like give y'all like positive affirmations. Can you speak on like why that's important? Because right now, I feel like there's a narrative in the W where like all the vets are just like not welcoming you all. But there are those glimpses where they actually are. So I want to focus on the positive. Yeah, I remember Tina, we, we spoke three times throughout the game. And one time she told me that I could take the middle spot on a jump ball, which I didn't know. We were laughing about mm -hmm. that. Then she told me that I should keep posting up. And then she also told me that I should go to my quick spin. So it's like really, it means a lot that, you know, I've grown, grown up watching her play that someone, we're still competing against each other, but she's still, you know, kind of pouring into us and you know we were laughing about it because it's kind of like but we're still competing and you know you just um you know i'll remember that for the rest of my life so really admire her thank you ray hey rikia ray Murai from the sporting tribune uh what have you been seeing the last two games that made you have big scoring games the last two um again i just want to win um, I feel like I've been getting a little bit more acclimated with the physicality. Um, I know if I'm not being physical back, I'm sitting on a bench. So I know I need to, you know, be physical first with them and, you know, let them know that they just can't bully me just because I'm a rookie. Um, and another thing is, like, I just want to be a defensive presence for this team. I feel like that's something that I've been working on and, you know, taking to the chin, um, you know. Before our first game, Kurt was just like, I'm going to make you a better defensive player. And I feel like when he said that, that just meant a lot to me because, like, that just makes me want to go harder for him, especially on the defensive end. No matter who I'm guarding, I just, you know, want to get that defensive stop. So I just feel like just being physical and things like that. And, you know, my coaches just keep encouraging me. Thank you. And we to bounce back, Cam. Yes, sir. What's that? Well, they're incredibly, um, they're incredibly easy to coach, and uh, you know, sponges. They want to win, 
Uh, they want to help us even more than than they are. And again, they're a pleasure to coach. Um, bright, bright days are ahead and they're already doing good things. Um, you know, they, uh, Cam in particular, you know, is tough on herself, but uh, I'm excited about wh where they're headed. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Bert, Thank do we have questions Thank for you. Kurt? We get started with Infinity. Hey, Kurt. Uh, Coach Kurt Miller, uh, DJ from Infinity TV. First of all, happy Father's Day from our mm -hmm. team to yours. Um, <laughs> quick question for you about your starting lineup. We had limited production today from Laisha Clarendon and Kia Nurse. Can you talk about how happy you are with um, how your starting lineup has started and any adjustments that you might make? Yeah, I think that uh, obviously um, Ari played really well off the bench and extended her minutes and, and did not go back with Lasia today because Ari was playing so well. Um, Ari, first time back in Atlanta after being drafted here and playing here, obviously was an emotional game for her, um, you know, which just really fueling us. So, um, you know, felt comfortable staying with Ari. Kia and, and Lexi Brown shared uh, a lot of the minutes at the two guard position. And again, I thought Kia did some really good things early on defensively, um, you know, just didn't get her a lot of offensive opportunities in her 20 minutes in, in Lexi's 20 minutes. Um, you know, again, I thought um, Lexi found some players and made just some simple plays off pick and rolls. And there was a lot of attention to her. So she used the attention to her to get other people involved. Unfortunately, um, you know, between the two of them, our, you know, our two guards went one for 10 from the floor. So, um, you know, we, we need more production from that, that position, but they both did things a, in other ways to impact in some of their minutes. Obviously we need scoring out of a two guard position, but, you know, Kia's defense, uh, Lexi's ability to share the ball and get Erica the ball, um, you know, was important in stretches also, but, uh, Obviously, there's little room. Uh, we don't we don't have a lot of cushion for air for wins and losses for us. And so we we will continue to really challenge those guys to get more offensive production, scoring offensive production from that two guard position. Hey, Coach Jackie, Jackie Ray TV. Um, kind of to piggyback off that, teams are obviously giving Dierica the respect she deserves, and she's drawing the double and triple teams. Is how are you going to make sure other people can capitalize on that and get some scores on the board for you? Yeah, I think you know Dierica was disappointed with her you know offensive performance tonight. I thought they did a really good job of um, having a lot of people uh, crowd her driving lanes and forced her more into perimeter actions. Um, and then, you know, Dierica has is so much attention now and, and credibility around the league with these 11 double doubles in 14 games that, um, you know, again, showing her that she may have to just move the ball mm -hmm. and get into another action when so much attention, can she create other opportunities for other people? She had four assists tonight and I thought there was opportunities maybe that she could have you know, even a, a even a six, eight, even a ten uh, assist night because how much attention was given to her tonight. Thanks, Coach. Eric. Happy Father's Day, Coach. Um, what does it take to close out games, and what does your team have to learn to do so? Yeah, I mean, I think you heard it from Rikia, right? Our execution in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, from the little things, our, our screening physicality, our intentionality to play through certain people, you know, in the in the fourth quarter for them, you know, Howard scores seven, Gray scores 10 and Charles scores four. So, you know, like they're they're three go to players in Ryan Howard, Alicia Gray and Charles. There's intent in the fourth quarter to really play for them. They also wanted the ball. And so. You know, we we talked about, you know, like, do who are we playing through? What's our execution going to look like? So, um, again, you know, we just got to keep putting ourselves in position. We were very competitive to late in, in Seattle. We were very competitive in the Minnesota game. Uh, we had a fourth quarter lead tonight. Uh, but we've got to find a way to finish 
and execute and know that it's going to get tougher. You know, defense is really locked down in the fourth quarter. They brought more ball pressure. They brought more physicality. And all of a sudden, everything became a little bit tougher than throughout the game. Um, so, you know, just a, a, a disappointing 13-point fourth quarter, which, you know, we didn't help ourselves because we were not getting stops in the fourth quarter to allow us to get out and run and maybe play against some um, defenses that are yet to be set. Last question, Ernest. Coach, talk to me about um, the message that um, you had for the team after the game. Just that, you know, the the fourth quarter, you know, talking about, you know, how um, we're putting ourselves in position, but we have to execute better. We have to have, um, you know, people step up and want the ball. We've got to understand who we want to play through. And, uh, and, and you know, so that was that was a big message. And then, you know, just um, like continuing to grow. We've got to continue to grow. This road trip doesn't get any easier now with three games against uh, Connecticut and New York um, on the horizon. And we still have a road game before we start playing at home again. So a really tough nine and 18 day stretch, nine games in 18 days with, you know, all you know, the whole back half of it um, on the road. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Okay. What's going on, LA Sparks Weekly fans? We are back. It is DJ Treacy Treese. I am in studio with my homegirl, Jackie Ray from Jackie Ray TV. We just heard from the coach and players together here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, coach talked a lot about starting the game and finishing the game. The players talked about how, you know, they, they weren't happy with their production yeah. and they, they really didn't do the things that they did well at the end of the game. What are your first thoughts hearing from Rakia and Cameron on their performance tonight? It's more of what I saw, like them sitting at that desk. They looked exhausted. They're <laughs> like, like they was like, can we just sleep? And I know there's no excuses. Every player will tell you, you no, know, the, the traveling, the schedule, none of that is an excuse. But we've talked a lot about rookie fatigue. Yep. And for them, you know, they haven't had a break yet. And they're playing teams that are playing them very physical. And the level of exhaustion that you can see, it's one thing to start a game, but by the time you get to that fourth quarter, and that's what we saw, by the yeah. time we got to that fourth quarter, they just didn't have anything left. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately, there's not a lot. They're just going to have to play through that yeah. because there's not enough that we can do to really, you know, circumvent that. Um, you know, Rakia said she's doing yoga, and Coach gave her a look like, "Wait, I ain't seen you do no yoga. <laughs> Wait, <what's the> yoga <laughs> Would you do that?" <laughs> but you know, they're doing. She says she's doing these things, you know, to keep their body loose and things like that. So it's just going to be a grind and getting their body and mental, you mm -hmm. know, prowess up. But once that happens, I do think because the talent is there. Like you can't deny that the talent is there. It's gelling in a way that I, I have to admit, I didn't think it was going to gel this mm -hmm. quickly. I, when when we said this was a building year, I thought we was going to be building to like the middle of the season, right. and <laughs> then we'd start seeing. But they're gelling very quickly now. It's just about getting that cohesiveness and getting over that hump. Right, and we we talked to the new kids on the block. Yeah. But my question to coach was. You know, Laisha had a little bit less of production. Right. Kia had that. He brought up the fact that uh, Kia and Lexi shared that two-guard position mm -hmm, and shared those mm -hmm. minutes. But those players weren't as effective as we would need them to be tonight. What are your thoughts on the people who are in the starting lineup and then coming off the bench who are the vets who normally produce but aren't getting the touches that we would normally see them getting. Yeah, I think that's a mental thing. I think when you're used to being in a starting position and then now you're coming off the bench, you do have to get a, a, an adjustment. And mm -hmm. I also think that people need to get used to playing with each other. Right. You know? And so I think there's a level of, there's a lack of chemistry in that area. Because Lasia, she's a vet. She's a, you know, she can yeah. do what she can do. So to see her not get the minutes, uh, I, I did want to, kind of curious as to why that happened. We know she was just coming off of a concussion. Is there some lingering thing right. there or something like that? But I do think we need to start seeing the same group of people playing in their roles right. so they can build that chemistry. Right. And to, to your point with Laisha playing limited minutes, I think it was a thing of Aerie was just doing better. She was, And yeah. also, it's the team she came from. Right. So you gotta, you gotta ball out. You gotta let her do her thing. Right. You know, first time playing back at <laughs> yeah. the play. So I think Aerie yeah, yeah. was just doing her thing. Again, she has been amazing off the but bench. But we've had that debate. Well, yeah. at least maybe I just had no, it by let's myself. Let's talk about okay. it. Introduce <laughs> the debate to the show. Because I have wondered. I love Laisha. Lasia 
fallen. Yeah, always. I love the way they see the court. Mm -hmm. I love the way they execute. I love the way they create plays for the rest of their team. Right. But airy. Airy. I just think that the energy immediately goes up when she's on the floor. Mm -hmm. I think that the intensity goes up when she's on the floor. Yep. And it just, there's a mental shift in the whole team. And I, and I, Say it again. I think you just got to see. We got to see. We got, since we're trying things, it looks like we're trying things. Because mm-hmm. Stephanie Talbot, we're trying things. Yeah. Lee, <laughs> we're trying things. Everybody, we're trying different I things. I like Lee, though. I, oh, first of all, I love Lee. Okay, thank you. I don't like Lee. <laughs> I love Lee. I yes. think Lee has been the most improved player so 100%. far in this sample size. Mm-hmm. I, from that first game that we saw Lee play to now, I mean, she did reverse yep. layups. She doing drop steps. She taking shots. She's an exceptional free throw shooter. Absolutely. Can we talk? I don't even know her percentage, but I'm sure it's high. It's yeah, over And 80%. there's a language barrier, you know? So for her to be can every game leveling up, and we know that she's probably leveling up her English as well yeah. because you have to learn how to communicate. I love her. I've always, always said that, well, I don't say always, like just this season, I've said that long term she's going to remind me of Joker. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. She's got that game mm-hmm. because she's also got that three ball. Yep. She scored a three-pointer yep. as a spark. We haven't seen much of her since then, yeah. but she's also been doing a really great job defensively grabbing rebounds and doing a bunch of different yeah. things. Let's talk a little bit about some people who didn't get that much play time today. As I'm looking down the list, Ray Burrell played five minutes. Um, not that much production, just two points there. Also, Zaya Cook didn't play again today. What are your thoughts mm-hmm. on Zaya's limited minutes so far? Where does she fit into your mix of where Coach sees this team? So, and that's probably one of those questions I should have asked him because I need to understand what do you see that I'm not seeing? Right. You know, because for me, especially if you're just trying to get the feel, which a lot of these rotations feel to me like we're just trying to get the feel, see who works together. Zaya needs more minutes. Yeah. On, on the flip side, Ray, we know she can come in hot. You just got to let her get hot, but you're not giving her the time to get hot. Right, five So I'm, I'm trying to understand, I don't know is what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. I don't understand why, because there's some moments in time, like, what, six minutes left in the fourth quarter, you kind of knew, you, you wanted it, but you kind of knew. So at that moment in time, why aren't we seeing some different rotation? Like, there's just, I just need a better understanding as to what his plan is. right. And the only thing that I can think of in Coach's defense is that he's trying to play bigger. That's the only right. thing. Because Ari McDonald is small. Zaya is also a small point guard. Especially against physical teams. Against he always physical goes teams, bigger. It seems like mm-hmm. he wants to go bigger mm-hmm. and, and play bigger players. And that's why the Kia nurse uh, gets to play even, play time even. Yeah, even yeah. And Stephanie Talbot. Yeah, yeah. Because even <laughs> if the production isn't there, yeah. she's doing those defensive things. And also she can keep up competitively on that physicality uh, uh, with those teams. But the – Okay. But we still got to score, though. We got to we gotta win. And, and, and to win, we got to score. We got to score. So while, I, while I'm all about going big, sometimes you, if it's not working, if yeah. it's not working and you're not getting over that hump offensively, you got to put people in that you know can come in and get hot. I agree. I totally agree with you, Jackie Ray. Now, we have a segment <laughs> on here where we pick the player of the game. Okay. You are the visiting guest, so tell me who's your player of the game and why they're your player of the game. It's, it's going to be Aerie. Gonna it's going to be airy because, again, I've, I've had this argument, and I love that she's kind of made me see things a little differently because without her, I'd have been like, Lasia all day. It wouldn't yeah. even have been a question. She's really made me see her game, her as a player different, mm-hmm. um, and, and how she energizes her, the rest of her team. So, for me, she's going to be the player of the game and um, definitely somebody I want to see more of more consistently. Yeah, I, I agree with you, but Aerie's not my player of the game. My okay. player of the game today is going to be – Cameron Brink. Yes. Okay. That's easy. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you why. She had a, her and Rakia scored the same amount of points. Yeah. She did have more rebounds than Rakia. But the thing I'm most proud of is that she had four fouls and she didn't foul out. Man. You gotta take those small. I know there are no moral victories, but this is a moral victory for yeah. me. Not fouling out and being able to stay on the floor a little bit longer can help, help your, team your team down the stretch. And then again, we're in a building year, foundational building year. We need for her to have some experience with getting in foul trouble and mm-hmm. staying in the game and watching your hands and still being effective for the team. So yeah. I think she did a better job, and Coach says she beats herself up. Cam, stop that. Yeah. Girl, you're doing the thing. Rakia, don't ever do that. Both of y'all. That takes too much energy. It y'all already look energy. tired. You're killing it. <laughs> and it's hard to play against these yes. girls. Y'all are doing a phenomenal job.